Hello, this is Michael Griffin for Art of Outdoor Survival. Today I'm going to talk about um, a medicinal plant and how to identify what medicinal uses of a plant without even knowing what the name of it is or you know, just being outdoors. Uh, you can sit here and learn for um, 25 years like I've had and know each different plant, but there's a way to go around. If you didn't know the plant, you can actually find out what uses it has um, just being out in the woods. So you can be anywhere in the world, not know anything about the plants itself, but if you understand its basic system, then you can use um, this to better advantage um, what the medicinal properties of a plant is. Um, I advise learning the poisonous plants of that continent because you don't want to be tasting plants that may end up killing you. I mean, there's some things like um, 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 new plants new trees that use you eat 52 needles they say roughly it could kill a human there's other plants that are even more toxic than that so you want to at least start understanding more about the poisonous plant than the edible and, and the medicinal uses of plants but once you get that out of the way um basic um, um very poisonous deadly plants then when you go on the wheel of wilderness you can better identify those and kind of stay away from them. But how I do this is you use the five senses um, of your own body, talk about sight, smell, um, touch, taste, and hearing what the plant is trying to tell you. And if you just close your eyes and you just sit there and think about what this plant is actually doing, then and think clearly, then it's not that hard. And the first thing I want to go into is the um, sight. And what I mean by sight is um, if you look at a plant like parsley, you look at it and you say, well, it's green. It's pretty dark green here, light green here. And green is basically chlorophyll. It's liquid sunshine trapped in a plant. And when you understand that all green plants basically have chlorophyll, then you know what chlorophyll is good for. Chlorophyll is um, on the market now as spirulina and algae, and they use it to um, kill a lot of bacteria and viruses and stuff like that. It's very high in vitamin A. And so if you're eating a source like that, then you can end up um, um, killing a lot of illnesses with just chlorophyll alone. And that's very simple. You've got flavonoids, which um, we think of flavonoids as antioxidants. It's been known to cure cancers, tumors, whatever. It soaks up the free radicals that are running through your body. And the way to be able to look at a plant is when, um, the, when you look at a plant and you see reds and yellows. There's a yellow from a, um, a lemon. But say during the fall time, parsley will turn a little yellow there. So you know it has a little bit of flavonoids in it. We can think of it like blueberries. Even though blueberries are blue, the leaves during the fall turn bright red. And the redder or the yellow something is, the more flavonoids it has. And, and the less color of that color, then you know it, it kind of it's kind of um, lessened. So the, when you look at the leaves, the fall leaves and foliage and stuff, you can instantly tell if this plant has um, um, flavonoids in it. And flavonoids are, are basically, you know, like I said, anti-cancers, anti-tumor, um, antibacterials, and stuff like that. And so, just looking at a plant, you instantly know. Now, orange, orange is a is a mix of um, yellow and red. So you know, orange is um, has several different types of flavonoids um, bound together. The next one would be latex, and you would normally think latex if you scratch a plant. And you see milk substance coming out, looks like milk. Um, that has, uh, that is a latex, and and if if you actually went and tasted the latex and it burned yourself, that that tells you there's an alkaloid in there, and that's most likely poisonous. But you can see latex in dandelion and milk thistle. So dandelion and milk thistle is known for being a liver cleanser, and so um, it takes the toxins out of your liver. So it can protect you from um, extreme poisons, but um, uh, when you get a hot biting latex, it's best to stay away from that plant. 
You can think of latex as like in morphine. Uh, morphine is just opium that's scratched on the, the seed pod and the latex comes out and they use that to get morphine. So it actually can be a painkiller. We can think of this as wild lettuce, which is, has si similar um, properties as opium, just not in the strongness of it. it. And it does reduce pain. So if you had a back pain or something, you could use that. And that's the alkaloid with the latex that's actually making a painkiller. But um, stay away from really strong, hot biting. Um, like that. You can think of starch. You cut a potato, you can see inside, starch is loosely, or a cattail or something, you can see the starch in the roots of the plants and around the fiber. And that pretty much tells you that starch can be used, if it's not poisonous, starch can be used to soak up poisons within, within, within your body. And um, the more starch diets you're eating, alkaloids and, and other types of poisons don't affect you as much. If you ate a high diet in uh, potatoes before you went drinking that night, it's, you're not going to get as drunk as if you went and drank without having enough starches in you. So it, it absorbs the actual toxins in your body. It also gives you energy. It is a carbohydrate. Um, um, sapiens um, is, I kind of like to call it sopiums. <laughs> Because it basically gives you soap. And what you can do is you can take, this, take the plant and you actually can scrape it and crush it and place it in a bottle, add a little water to it, and just shake it up. You can find this in yucca plants a lot, the soap berries. And you do this and the plant will set up. And that lets you know it had soapings in it. Without even touching the plant, you know you can use this for um, bathing, washing your clothes, whatever you want to do with it, um, cleaning a room. Um, it's also used for fish poison. This actually takes the oxygen away from the gills and fish just float up in the water. A lot of the um, tribal people use that all over the world to to put that soap into the um, um, pools and, and the fish would just float up and they would just gather. Another one would be resin. resin you think of pine sap, um, um, all types of gum, arabic, and stuff like that. If you make a tea out of uh, out of um, saps, um, resin saps, it'll coat your throat. So if you got a sore throat or anything like that, it'll, it'll coat your throat and it'll make you feel a little bit better. And then flame will come up a lot easier. It won't it won't hurt you as much. And then we go to smell. Smell on the other hand, you think of volatile oils. Um, think of a lemon or a piece of garlic, very smelly um, stuff, but volatile oils are basically, um, you think of all the spices in the spice cabinet, like cinnamon, and all spices were made to protect food in the days of before refrigeration, so when you think of your kitchen spices, that's normally what the original properties of it was, is to be um, anti-salmonella, antiviral, antibacteria, um, anti-parasitic, and so if you use those plants that smell really strong, um, um, it'll give you a lot of um, antibacteria and stuff like that. But um, you got to be careful because volatile oils they dissipate in the air very quickly, um, and so they don't last long. They have a very short shelf life. That's why you should change your spices at least every three months to six months because you're, lo you're losing the volatile oils, the essential oils. The next one would be coumarins. When you think of something very sweet, I guess you can um, say like clover or um, lilac flowers um, with, would be um, coumarins. And you get a sweet smell like that. They're anti-inflammatory and um, antibacterial. And you can use those as a lilac flowers, you can't really eat as much, but you can use them to wash wounds with as an antibacterial. Um, we think of sulfur, when you smell it, you crush a piece of garlic, and instantly you get that strong smell of onions or garlic or whatever, uh, mustard plants, um, have a very strong smell. So you can use that as uh, um, blood purifiers, uh, bacterial, antifungal, 
Um, basically, sulfur is a type of penicillin. So anything you would use penicillin for. Then you go to cyanides. And you know cyanides in a plant, and you think of almonds. You smell an almond, get that use of that smell, and when you smell that in a plant, that's cyanide in there. And cyanide in small doses can um, kill bacteria and viruses as well. But in high doses, it, it can kill you. So um, you got to be careful with certain cyanides. You think of that in arrowroot. Uh, when they're processing arrowroot or, or sago um, plants. Um, but heat actually destroys cyanide poison. If you think of peach seeds, plums, cherry seeds, whatever, they all have a little bit of cyanide, apple seeds. And that's pretty much it on, um, on cyanide, but cyanide can be used as a very sedative. Then you want to touch. Well, you have mucilagin. And um, you think of that when you think of aloe vera, very slimy. It coats the stomach. Um, it helps um, coat the membranes inside of you. Um, externally, it's good for sunburns, um, any kind of wounds. Fish have a slime on them to keep the bacteria away from them. So when you use useful plants on a wound, it actually coats the, the wound to keep it from gathering bacteria. Um, a lot of times they're antiviral as well. Um, a lot of people use um, aloe vera to treat um, herpes um, outbreaks and stuff like that. Um, you think of sopiums, sapiens. You, get, you feel that soap going, so you know what it uh, would do. But um, then you would go to taste. And you might put, put something in your mouth that you know is not poison. If it's sweet, instantly you know it's going to give you energy. Um, starch, on the other hand, you know what? You lick a potato, you kind of pretty much know what that is. So you can identify it that way. Um, um, phenols is um, a lot of plants where you get salic acidic acid and um, you think of that as aspirin. If you put an aspirin in your mouth, you know quickly what that flavor is going to be. So when you put that in your mouth and you get that taste, it's a pain reducer. Um, anything that you can use aspirin for, you can use um, phenol as well. And um, also good for heart patients. You think of tannic acids. You think um, you put a piece of pine bark in your mouth and you get that dry and puckering flavor in your mouth. Um, that's good for antibacterial. You want to drink water as soon as you do that. You think of tea, coffee, it all has tannic acid. But um, if you put a piece of pine um, bark in, you'll, you'll get the idea of what tannic acid is. And that's antiviral, antiparasitic. I mean, it, it's great for teeth washing, um, good for sore throats. And for wounds, it's good for killing bacteria in the wounds. It actually saved a lot of soldiers during World War II. They would dress the wounds in tannic acid tea, kind of like stuff, and put it over the wounds. It actually kept a lot of guys alive. So it's a good wound washing. Uh, it does take away poison ivy and poison oak if you wash that wound as well. Um, bitters, on the other hand, you might think of like um, cocoa. You know, you put it in your mouth, it's bitter, but it doesn't have that puckering where you got to drink five gallons of water. Uh, bitters kind of get your gastrointestinal juices moving. So it's it's very good. It's good for a last step. That's why people would um, skip a heart um, in, in a, um, indigestion and stuff like that. That's why people take bitters after dinner or before dinner. Um, another one would be um, acroids. You put that in your mouth. You're going to get this hot burning sensation. If you put a piece of garlic in your mouth, you're going to know what an apple is, a hot pepper, um, horseradish. That's good for blood. I mean, it gets blood moving, um, brings up flame. And what it's really doing is it's putting water down in your lungs. And, and that way the flame can start moving up out of your, out of your system. That's why it's good for colds and flus and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to run out of time here, I can tell. But um, ox. Ox, um, salic acid, you would think of like lemon. Lemon is centronella, but it's not oxalate. Um, oxalic acid. But if you taste on that sour and stuff like that, it tastes like lemons, you know it has that. And that can be poisonous in high doses, but it, it does have, a, it has the um, same thing as tannic acid, so it's stringent. You can use it for skin washes and stuff like that. But it's very good for, um, um, for taking, um, vitamin C and stuff. So whatever good vitamin C is good for, it's pretty much um, the same thing could be used.
you think of alkaloids, when you put an alkaloid in your mouth, it's going to be bitter. But the moment you taste bitterness, 